Join us for the Living the Life broadcast on our series, Understanding the Goodness of God with Dr. Chooks Ugohe. Good evening. Welcome. Tonight is episode 322. I am Dr. Chooks Ugohe. I am teaching uh, a contemplation uh, titled The Goodness of God and the Ministry of Angels. The Goodness of God and the Ministry of Angels. Tonight is part two. I started this contemplation yesterday. Uh, it's part of the series of teachings on the understanding the goodness of God. And uh, if you've been following this teaching, we've been looking at the concept of the goodness of God from many angles, from different theological perspectives around the Word of God. And we have come uh, now to the ministry of angels. How does the goodness of God connect with the ministry of angels? Or how does the ministry of angels connect with the goodness of God? And what, what does the Bible teach? And that's my job, to teach what the Bible teaches. All right? So let's begin for tonight at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Verse 23. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. The word of God reads, And now, now may the God of peace himself, may the God of peace himself, sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. May the God of peace sanctify you completely. S to sanctify means to set apart. May the God of peace set you apart completely. Not a part of you uh, left on the other side. Let all of you be set apart completely. Uh, and, and he now went on to tell us what the whole uh, package is. It's your spirit, it's your soul, and it's your body. Now, a few things we said yesterday that angels are ministering spirits sent forth, sent forth, we, we dealt with that yesterday, sent forth to minister to those who are going to inherit salvation. For those who are going to, who are heirs of salvation, some version of the Bible put, put it that way, heirs of salvation, or those who are going to inherit salvation. And we talked about salvation, that, that the salvation that God offers to humanity is a three-dimensional salvation. Salvation for the spirit, for the soul, and for the body. Now, we, we read here, okay, no, no. Then we established yesterday that angels are involved in that work of establishing or birthing or manifesting salvation in the spirit, in the soul, and in the body. And we gave instances in scriptures where angels were involved in helping people come to salvation in their spirit. Uh, an example was Cornelius and his household, where angels were involved in the salvation of the soul, which we, which we identified as, in the New Testament, is called the renewal of the mind. The renewal of the mind. Uh, and we, we saw an angel being uh, involved in delivering revelation because the mind is renewed through revelation. Through delivering revelation and, wi and wisdom and counsel from heaven for a man who was seeking understanding. That man was Daniel. Uh, so we saw an angel being uh, a part of the process of bringing him to that understanding and that knowledge. And then we went on to uh, uh, the salvation of the body. And we said, <laughs> ultimately, ultimately, the transformation of the body from mortality to immortality, which is the zenith, which is the apex of the work of transformation in our physical bodies, angels are involved. And if angels are involved at the very top or at the apex of the transformation of our physical bodies from from mortal bodies to glorious bodies, from mortal bodies to immortal bodies. If angels are involved there, then they must be involved all the way from the bottom going up. Because we know that our bodies will go through several metamorphoses, several changes, several transformations to attain immortality eventually. Angels are involved. 
And we mentioned yesterday that angels are involved even in healing of the physical body. Angels are involved in protection of the physical body from trauma. Now, now, I, I, l- l- let me say this. We know that the physical body uh, dies as a result of three things. As a result of three things. Number one, sickness and disease. Sickness and disease is one of the things that attack the physical body and the physical body can die from sickness and disease. Number two is bodily trauma. Somebody may not be sick, nothing may be wrong with them, but they have an accident and their body is crushed and they, their spirit cannot stay in a crushed body and they have to die. Or they get burnt you know, uh, in a fire accident and they have to die. So when the physical body sustains trauma, um, death is, is the end product. If the trauma is so severe uh, that the body cannot recover, the person dies. All right? So physical trauma causes death. Now, third is aging. Aging also causes death. Now, I want you to know this. Angels are involved. Angels are involved in in protecting the physical body from death, whether it's sickness and disease, whether it is trauma, whether it's aging, the ministry of angels are involved. Yeah, but I'm going to get into that in the course of this series. I'm going to get into it deep in the course of this series, but I just thought to, to drop that, that angels, the ministry of angels are needed uh, to protect the body from sickness and disease. Uh, from bodily trauma, and from the effects of aging, angels are involved in redeeming the body. All right. So the scripture we read here today, it says that you may, that now may the Lord, may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. Be preserved blameless, to pre- be preserved without contamination, to be preserved without uh, decay, to be preserved without impurity. That's what it means to be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. God wants us, spirit, soul, and body, to have no blemish, to have no stain, to have no corruption for the coming of the Lord. And I'm, 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 I'm saying tonight that angels are involved in that work. Now, now we, we, we saw yesterday that angels are the messengers that deliver the manifestation of the goodness of God. The angels are ministry spirit that minister the tangible manifestation of the goodness of God. When the goodness of God comes to the human spirit, salvation is the effect. Salvation is the result. So, so a, 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 a human being who experienced the goodness of God in their spirit, the first manifestation of the goodness of God to your spirit is that your spirit is saved. Is that you are moved from darkness to light. You are moved from, from, from dominion of Satan to the, the kingdom of God's son, God's beloved son. So, so that's salvation for the spirit. And then salvation for the soul is renewal of the mind. And we saw angels involved in that as well. And and and, and then the, the last one is the body. And we see angels also involved in that. All right. It says here the the goodness of God, the goodness of God we said yesterday rather, the goodness of God when it hits your spirit, you are saved. When it hits your soul, your mind is renewed. And as your mind is renewed, prosperity comes, success comes. You, you remember that scripture in 3 John 2? I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers, even as your soul prospers, even as your soul prospers. As your soul prospers, prosperity, uh, success, uh, dominion, they are the effect. So the goodness of God manifesting in the soul a person will have prosperity. A person will have success. 
A person will have joy in their relationships. They'll have joy in their homes. They'll have joy because the mind is renewed. The goodness of God will manifest as prosperity, joy, and peace. All right. Now, the goodness of God in the body, the first level of the goodness of God manifesting in the human body is healing. Is healing. You know, healing from ailments and infirmity. And then the second level is health. Is health. And then the third level is divine life. But, but let, me, let me leave that because I want to get into it uh, deeper in the course of this series. Angels are involved. Now, here, Scripture says it's the will of God that our body, our soul, and our spirit be preserved blameless. Who does that work? Who is, is responsible for that preservation unto blamelessness? Angels. Angels do the bidding of God. Angels execute the manifestation in the physical dimension, in the third, in the third uh, uh, dimension, the, the goodness of God. Angels are involved. So when the Bible says here that it's a God's, God's desire, the God of peace himself will preserve, will sanctify you completely and make your, make you, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved. It's the work of angels. The Father does it through the ministry of angels. The Father does it through the ministry of angels. Angels are needed for your spirit to be preserved without blemish, to be preserved without spot or wrinkle. Angels are needed for your soul to be delivered from corruption. Angels are needed for your body to be delivered from mortality. Angels are the agents. They are the servants. They are the messengers. So, so in the spirit, soul, and body of man, if the goodness of God is going to manifest in those three dimensions, that is the work of the messengers that we call angels. Angels are what, who, who do the manifestation, who engage the, 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 the message of God, spiritual forces, to manifest the goodness of God in our spirit, in our soul, and in our bodies. Now, let's go to Psalm 104. Psalm 104, verse 4. Psalm 104, verse 4. The word says, Who makes his angels spirits? His ministers a flame of fire. Who makes his angels spirits? And his ministers a flame of fire. Now, we said it yesterday, we have another scriptural witness confirming that angels are spirits. Just like God is a spirit, man is a spirit, angels are spirits. They are spirits of a certain order. They are not, they are not spirits in the order of God, in the terms of the, in the likeness and the image of God. No, only man is a spirit in the order of God. God made man in his image and after his likeness. So man is a spirit who, who was made in the order of God. Angels are spirits, but they're not in the order of God. Now we have a scriptural witness confirming that. Who makes his angels spirits? His ministers a flame of fire. Now remember the Bible say, told us in, in Hebrews 1.14 that angels are ministers. Angels are servants. Angels are ministers. So he makes his ministers flame of fire. Meaning that sometimes in the realm of the spirit, when you see angels, they look like fire. Angels bear the resemblance of fire. And, and you can see them as a flame. You can see them as a raging inferno. They come in the, in the form of fire. Now, now, on the day of Pentecost, cloven tongues of fire came upon people's head when the Holy Ghost was poured out on the disciples of Jesus. Cloven tongues of fire were seen on top of each person's head. I, I, I kind of suspect 
that what we saw in the book of Acts uh, chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost, those flames of fire that were resting on people's heads were angels. Angels were released from heaven in a dimension never known before in the earth. And these messengers came to the earth. And can I suggest that they have not left since that time. The, 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 the outpouring of the Holy Spirit released angelic ministry like never before. Remember the purpose for the outpouring of the Spirit. Jesus said, tarry in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high so that you can be witnesses, so that you can be witness, witness of what? Witness of the power of God, witness of the goodness of God, witness of he said you will receive power to be witnesses, to be witnesses. And then 10 days after, on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down and there were flames of fire on people's heads. And the Bible says that the, the, the angels are the ministers are made flames of fire. So, so I believe that it was angels that were released. And these angels were you know, found hanging on people's heads, 120 people there. They were all assigned angels to help with their ministry, with their assignment. And can I suggest, can I suggest that what God did on the day of Pentecost, he still does today to release angels to the people of God to help them manifest the goodness of God because that was, that's what makes you a witness. Oh yes, oh yes. That's what makes you a witness. A witness of the resurrection of Jesus. A witness of his power. A witness. We are witnesses of the goodness of God to the world. We are witnesses of the goodness of God to the world. The Bible said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. It's when you have tasted and you have seen it that you can truly testify that the, that the Lord is good. So, so it's only people who have tasted it, who have seen it, that can actually be effective witnesses. A witness is somebody who experienced something. So when they bring you to court to, to come and you know, be a witness to something, you are saying, I experienced it, I saw it. So a witness is somebody who experience something. The goodness of God must be tested, must be seen, must be experienced. Angels were released on the day of Pentecost to help bring a manifestation of the goodness of God to the people so that they can be witnesses, so they can be effective witnesses. I mean, how do you go out to testify of what God has done and, and you don't have a testimony. Mm -mm. Angels were released. So when tongues of fire were found on people's heads, I believe those were angelic beings uh, manifesting in the third dimension, manifesting to the physical senses of the apostles and onlookers as cloven tongues of fire. But there were angels who were released to help them experience the goodness of God so that they can testify, so that they can witness, they can tell the world what they have experienced. Angels are needed for us to experience the goodness of God in dimensions that will enable us to become testimonies to the world. Angels do that work. So, so the reason why many people do not experience the ministry of angels is that they are, they are oblivious of, you know, the, the role angels play. And, and you know the way the things of God are is, is what you know that you can release your faith for that you can have an experience of. If you don't know about it, you're not going to be able to experience it. So, so Jesus died for the whole world. The Bible says he's the lamb that takes away the sin of the whole world. Jesus died for the whole world. But not everybody has experienced salvation. Because not everybody has heard, not everybody knows about it. And if you don't know that your sins have been forgiven, 
You don't know that he died on the cross for you. You don't know that he has actually brought you into his family. You will not lay hold on it. You will not believe it. You will not, you know, uh, possess it and manifest it. So it's the same thing with every promise of God. Every promise of God needs to be, you need to become aware of it. You need to lay hold on it by faith, appropriate it to yourself by faith, and then experience it. If you do not know about it, you will not believe for it. The same way, if you do not know the, 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 um, the extent of the ministry of angels, if you don't know what they're supposed to be doing in your life, you will not be able to release your faith to draw it in, to bring it into your experience. That's why we are doing this teaching, that you may become aware that angels were sent for you to experience the goodness of God. All right, look at this. In 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 22. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 22. The Bible says, Who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers having been made subject to him, angels and and authorities and powers having been made subject to him. Now, I see here that angels are subject to Christ. Angels are subject to Christ. They are subject to Christ's authority, but also they are subject to Christ's nature and Christ's character. They are subject to Christ's authority and they are subject to Christ's nature and character. And, and, and God's nature is what? Goodness. That's it. The Bible says God is good and he does good. God is good and he does good. God is good. But for him to do good and manifest goodness, angels are needed to be the messengers that deliver that goodness to man. Angels are the messengers that deliver the tangible experience of that goodness to man. So if you know that, then you can release your faith to, to draw down angelic assistance, to draw down angelic ministry. Do you know that the miracles in Jesus' uh, ministry, all the miracles that we see Jesus perform, they were, they were at the instance of angelic assistance. Angels were involved in making those miracles manifest. Jesus worked with angels. That was why Jesus said, you know, when they were about to arrest him and then Peter wanted to fight. <laughs> Peter drew out his sword to start fighting the people. Then Jesus says, come on, Peter, put your sword back. If it was a matter of fight, I wouldn't even need you <laughs> to pull out your sword. I will ask my father to send multitudes of angels to come and defend me. And my father would have obliged me. Now, now, he didn't pray for the angels to come down because it was not necessary for the angels to come to fight for him. Why? He was time, it was time for him to die. He came to die. So it was time for him to die. So the angels has to, had to stay away from defending him. They had to stay away from rescuing him because it was the will of God for him to die. So, so, so angels are needed for delivering the, 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 the goodness of God. And they are subject to the authority of Christ and they are subject to the nature of Christ. So, so in, in Jesus' ministry, angels were subject to him. Angels were helpful to bring healing when he prayed. Angels were helpful to bring uh, inter interventions when he prayed. Angels were the ones who were behind every supernatural occurrence, every supernatural miracle that, manifest in Jesus, that manifested in Jesus' ministry. Angels were involved. Hallelujah. So they are subject to the authority of Christ and they are subject to the nature of Christ. Any angel that is not subject to the nature of Christ is a fallen angel. <laughs> they are demons. Any angel that is not subject to the nature of Christ 
is a fallen angel, is a demon. It's important that you know that. Uh, Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Verse 18. Acts 5, verse 18. I want to show you the ministry of angels. Verse 18. And maybe we read from 17 for good understanding. Then the high priest rose up, and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation. They were angry. And they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. So, so they were angry that these men were preaching the gospel. They were angry that these men were carrying on with their assignment of preaching the gospel. And then they came and arrested them. Now, now I said it yesterday that the angels are not just interested in salvation of your soul, of your spirit, of your body, but they are also available and willing and able to help you fulfill your assignment in the earth help you fulfill your destiny, help you carry out your ministry. This was what this angel was about in the text we read. In, in, that's Acts chapter 5, verse number 18 now. It says, And they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. Verse 19, But at night... An angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out. An angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out. <laughs> and said, go and stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. Go and stand in the temple and speak to all the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught. You see, <laughs> they, they got them arrested and locked them up in the, in the jail. But an angel showed up and said, guys, <laughs> out, let's go. We are, you are out, let's go, let's go, you are out. And the angel released them. And, and the doors were not broken down. The walls didn't have holes in them. The angels supernaturally took them out of prison. This is the work of angels. We are living in the times where angelic activity is reaching all-time high. All-time high. Because God wants to get his people out of every prison. Every prison that the devil has tried to lock the people of God. The prison of, you know, a physical prison where you are restrained from doing the things you're supposed to do for the kingdom of God. Financial prisons, emotional prisons, every kind of <laughs> limitation and wall. Angels can get you out. Angels came in Acts chapter 5 and got Peter and the rest of the other people out. And they came out of prison by angelic ministry. And again, we see angels <laughs> come to the rescue of an apostle in uh, Apostle Peter in Acts chapter 12 once again. Again, <laughs> Herod carries James and beheads him and assassinates James. James was, was a prominent leader. You know, remember, Jesus had three inner circles, Peter, James, and John. Peter, James, and John. That James that was part of the inner circle is the one that was killed in Acts chapter 12. And when the James was executed, the Jews were happy. And they, they instigated Pharaoh, I'm sorry, Herod, to pick up Peter. And Peter was picked up and Peter was locked up. And Peter was about to be executed. But the church realized that there's a sinister plot against the movement of the body of Christ. And we got to stop him. So the church began to pray. The church began to pray. The church began to pray. And in response to their prayer, somewhere in the middle of the night, an angel showed up in the cell where Peter was. An angel said, wear your clothes. Let's go. And Peter <laughs> wore his clothes, 
followed the angel. The chains on his hands fell off. The chains, you know, the doors opened. And Peter went through three levels of security doors. And he came out to the street. He was delivered by angelic assistance, by angelic ministry. So we see that Peter was saved from untimely death by the ministry of an angel. I'm saying to you, whenever death comes knocking on the door, it's an opportunity for an, an angel of the Lord to, to answer that door and deliver you. Let me say that again. Every time death is knocking on the door, whether it knocks through sickness and disease, whether it knocks through uh, uh, bodily trauma, accidents, or it wants to knock through aging, there are angels that are available to respond so that your body is preserved blameless. Your body is preserved blameless unto the day of the coming of our Lord. So Peter got delivered supernaturally by the ministry of angels. Now, if you met Peter as he came out of prison, supernaturally, and asked him to tell you the story of Papa, what happened? Peter is going to be so joyful telling you the story of the goodness of God. It was the goodness of God that he was not executed. It was the goodness of God that he didn't have to die a, a painful death in the hands of the people who hate him and hated the gospel. But the goodness of God manifested and Peter was supernaturally delivered from their hands. The Bible says that, that Peter was delivered from the hand of Herod and from the desire of the Jewish people. Peter was delivered. What he experienced was the goodness of God. That deliverance was the expression of the goodness of God. And guess who was behind that deliverance? An angel. See? So, I want to wrap this up tonight. Angels are involved in delivering the goodness of God to your body, to your soul, to your spirit. And, and understanding helps you lock in your faith to believe for the activation of angelic ministry. If you don't know you will not release your faith. <laughs> like everything in the kingdom comes by faith. So if you don't know, you will not release your faith. But now you know. You can release your faith for angelic ministry. You can release your faith for angelic assistance. So you can release your faith for angelic inter intervention. This is their ministry. They are sent to minister. They are sent to minister for us who are going to inherit salvation. I pray that your life will experience the angelic ministry that God has made available for the New Testament saints to deliver the expression, the tangible expression of the goodness of God in your life. I am done for tonight. I'm going to continue next, uh, uh, next episode tomorrow. Episode 323 three is on. And we're going to be unpacking further the ministry of angels and as it relates to the goodness of God. I pray for, for the hand of God to rest upon you mightily. I pray that, that the angels of God will protect you. They will preserve you. They will bear you up in their hands. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. This is what the Lord wants to do for you. To preserve you from, from decay. To preserve your stuff from decay. These are all the ministry of angels. I'm done for tonight. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. There comes a time in your life when you need a change, an upgrade. You need upliftment. You need lasting results. You just want your life to be real. You need your life to be meaningful, deep, full, purposeful and easy. You're looking for enlargement, amplification, increase, strengthening. You're looking for growth in your life. You want leverage, strategic advantage, gain and favor, ability to influence clout and strength. Join us at Resurrection Life Church every Sunday. Visit our website reslife.org.za for more information. Make this year your year of being real. Embrace rapid enlargement and leverage. It is your time.